Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is February the 10th, 2019, and I'm going to hand it right over to Miss Vegas so she can explain the watch list. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this watch list is actually kind of exciting, so uh, we're going to talk about shrimp. I'm going to give you guys a little update also on what's happening with the marijuana sector this week uh, in regards to earnings. Uh, we are also going to talk about Starbucks and Ford and Zynga. So first, let's start with shrimp. So I have to say, I was actually mentioning the other day that if the YouTube videos, if I could go far back and see when we started mentioning this, we mentioned this basically throughout the month of January and constantly throughout February. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when Jim and I are like planning our uh, stocks that we want to talk to you guys about to keep on your watch list. Some of them, sometimes you might think as a viewer, a YouTuber that follows us, um, and even us as the content creators, oh my gosh, are we going to talk about the stock again? And you might think, I'm not watching this video. Well, you know what? That's unfortunate because I got to tell you, if you were watching Shrimp, when we talked about it so many times, people have made so much money. I mean, I actually did the math that if I personally would have put $2,000, which I did do at one time on shrimp, if I did not sell my original position, do you know I would have made $70,000 on one trade minus my investment? So technically $68,000. So sometimes, you know, you might see when we list our uh, thumbnails, we have the same ticker and you're thinking, oh my God, they're going to talk about that again. It's so important to listen and tune in there's a reason why we're talking about it again, because there's opportunities, hopefully, for a continuation and for you guys to make money. So for those of you that did extremely well on shrimp and that held it much, much longer than even myself, a huge congratulations, a huge thank you to Patrick, who really brought this to our attention. And uh, we're just so excited that we know him and that um, he knows OTC like no one else. So over to Jim now to talk about um, shrimp. Yep. Well, here's the shrimp years chart. And we called this right around when it was down here around two cents. And we had a little bitty pop on it. Let me see. It was right about in here. This area right in here, right before the big breakout. And I'm going to pull that up on a three-month chart. Right down in this area right in here is where we called it out at. And then every day, for I think almost every video we did almost, we talked about, you know, the continuation of this stock. And then last Friday had a huge breakout on this thing where it ran up to 70 cents. So we're talking from 2 cents to 70 within a month. And not even that, that long, within a couple of weeks. So I think we've kind of hit a little place where we need to, and I was telling the room, and I tell the room every day to take your profit and get in on a pullback and it did that about every day it pulled back a little bit consolidated and then bounced so here's the 20-day chart and all these blue lines are my extended trend lines from the breakouts and the pullbacks that i have called recently and we only had really one two good two days where it actually gapped up at, uh, from the previous previous uh, uh close so you know if you followed my command or not commands but alerts on this thing you would have got in on this pullback when it was up here at 32 cents down here at 24 and then from two days after that it just kept on going up and we're we were very bullish on this stock and i'm going to uh turn this down so we won't get any interference maybe so then i had a little trend line that i was following up on this stock so i'm going to bring it up to the 10 day kind of magnify it up a little bit you can see the better, the the more active how the stock was. Now it pulled back and then bounced up, consolidated thir uh, Thursday. And then Friday we had the huge breakout. And then at the end of the day, we did pull back again. And I did call the pullback Friday if you didn't get in on an initial breakout to, that it would pull back to 50 cents. And I'm going to pull up the day's chart now, show you exactly what I'm talking about. We had the breakout from 41 all the way up to 55 and I called back this 50 uh, cent support area before it got down there and then we touched it three times bounced up a little bit and then pulled back and then she ran up to this 6689 I think I was adding trend lines at this time 
looking for resistances and supports so I could play it for the pullbacks and it pulled back to my 100 SMA kind of fell above it and then ran above the 50 and then right at the end of the day we had a major pullback to that trend line that I had from uh, the previous day and that was right here at 46 cents and then here at close we're back up to 60 so this is still volatile it's probably going to be a little bit more volatile but I'm still very bullish on the stock and all I can say is maybe we'll come back and see that 50 cents again if not we'll go up and we'll try to retrace this resistance high here which is right around 69.57 that's what we got it's what we got to break right there so this is shrimp and the next one we're going to talk about is some earnings for the pot sector miss vegas is going to speak about that first yeah second. so i i definitely want to uh let everyone know that um you know also you know the stocks that are in the marijuana sector are expected to report earnings this week unfortunately we don't really know the actual dates uh because not every company has announced their reporting date but it is expected that aurora cannabis which is acb uh oxley cannabis group which is cbwtf and we have tilray tlry and canopy growth cgc that these will be announcing their most recent operating results this coming week um you have to remember as well, just to refresh you guys, that there are some heavy hitters in the growing marijuana space because Aurora Cannabis and Canopy Growth likely, I think, the number one and number two, uh, according to the Motley Fool, in terms of peak annual production at over half a million kilograms per year at peak capacity. And Tilray is capable of well over 200,000 kilograms if they expand their capacity, which you guys know, um, they did have um, money that was given to them from Constellation Brands, uh, equity investment of $4 billion back in November. And uh, this gives them obviously the capacity to um, expand to have an, uh, a huge, huge, huge warehouse. So I think um, there'll be some exciting news coming up in the marijuana sector this week i think uh triple digits plus probably so this will be quite exciting so jim i'm going to turn it over to you to talk about i guess uh, cgc cron and acb yep well i'll go ahead and pull up C cgc first we kind of had a little pullback on this stock let me pull up the 20 day i think that'll be plenty or plenty to talk about right here we did have we did hit this tried to hit this triple high here which was right around 5110 somewhere right around in that vicinity 5106 and she has pulled back for a week and i think a lot of the other pot stocks also did too because we've had a couple of catalysts come out and said they were trying to short these at their all-time high and that's including cron which uh their excuse and only excuse was that it was up a hundred percent and that's why they shorted it but uh, I kept bullish on it, and I'm still bullish on it. And I'm bullish on CGC, and I'm also bullish on ACB, maybe in the third. So they probably go in that order. And CGC, Cron, and then ACB. CGC and Cron are, are up there fighting the battle to be first place. And then we are also talking about Tillery. So CGC pulled back here to 45.15, and I think that's going to be like a double bottom for the retracement back up here to 47.13 I'm going to pull up a five day chart and see if we can get a clearer picture we had like the double bottom in this area right here and last time we hit down here it bounced all the way up to oh a high of around 47.90 and then she pulled back to 45.15 so keep that one on watch keep cron on watch and I'm going to type that in the window here cron I tried to play a little bounce play on the end of the day Friday and it failed on me but uh, I'll pull it up, show you what I was looking at. It did pull back to my support channel right here between 2031 and 2055 and kind of hung out in there. And you had a couple times to scalp it for 20 cents in that little area. And then at the end of the day, she decided to go ahead and pull on back. And she sold off down here at about 19 at the end of the day at 1948 after hours. She closed at 1955. 
So I'm still very bullish on Kron. We just got to see how how I'm I'm fighting the bears right now because people are wanting to try to short it, but I'm still 100% bullish on it. And then the last one I want to mention is ACB. ACB. I'll type it in the window. She also pulled back last week. Let me get you into the five day here. Actually, she pulled back and then she had a good little bounce retracement up here to 786. And then she pulled back here to 750. So these are my resistance lines. You're willing to go ahead and stop the video and jot some of these numbers down. But it seems like I'm calling them pretty much exact every time. We pulled back and hit this little support level Friday at 746. And we don't want it to go any lower than 727 for a retracement up. But I think this coming week, they're going to be bullish because the bears were fighting them last week. And then I just want to bring up InBev just for a fast second. That's right here. She also had a pullback, five-day pullback here, and she kind of retraced off that bottom support that I had at 608. She closed up here at 636. So I'm looking for a retracement on it, and I do have some options in this stock. And... So I need to get this thing back up to 750 by the end of the week. We're going to see what happens, but I'll probably get out with a little bit of profit in my options play. And I'm thinking earnings are going to come out on this one too. So the next one we're going to talk about, and, and I'm still 100% on the uh, medical marijuana and the C, CBD sector and the, the growing part of it on, on, on that sector. And the next one Vegas wants to talk about will be Starbucks. Well, 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 Starbucks. I have to tell you, this is everyone's. So many people love Starbucks. I still think their coffee is so expensive, but you know what? If you really want to, like one really good coffee a day, I actually have to say I do enjoy a good Starbucks. Uh, I don't have time to get it every day. I think it's a little pricey, but it doesn't matter. People still love it. Um, you know, I just want to mention, I mean, Starbucks, uh, I was reading about, you know, what they've been doing. They're looking to double their store count in China over the next four years. And this is a new strategy, by the way, that's going to help reaccelerate their earnings growth for the years to come. Um, what they've done is they've shifted their focus towards growing overseas, obviously in China. Uh, they've actually had a presence, just so you know, in China for 20 years. But the CEO, Kevin Johnson... He's made China very central to the company's strategy, and he was announced some plans to accelerate the growth in the country. And, um, you know, he took over as the CEO back in 2017. He, you know, he's reorganized the company, and he's also, you know, changed the corporate strategy. You know, they had a brand called Tazzo, T-A-Z-O, and they closed their, um, they sold it. They closed their Tiavana stores. Um, they also outsourced their grocery store packed coffee business to Nestle in exchange for $7 billion in cash. Um, and they also reacquired their East China franchise, which added 1,300 company operated stores in China. So when I say company, like, I mean, these are corporate stores. So, you know, the opportunity in China lies in a rising middle class which, by the way, is expected to double between 2018, which we just finished off, all the way to 2022, from 300 million to 600 million uh, people. So that's a lot of people, um, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but anyhow, I have to say that uh, looking at Starbucks, okay, this has made a nice new 52-week high, but also a new 52-week closing high. The stock definitely looks overbought and uh, it's caught my attention. As a matter of fact, I, you know, Jim and I were talking about it together on Friday and we were kind of in discussion on voice about, you know, what are your thoughts on getting maybe a Starbucks option call? And, um, you know, we kind of, I kind of said I, the chart looked kind of bullish to me. So I did buy a Starbucks option call and maybe I'll let Jim talk about the chart. I'm just going to open up my desktop here. Uh, if Jim, you want to talk about the chart, I'm just going to pull up the option call I bought yeah. on Starbucks and then I'll tell you, and then I'll share that uh, with the viewers in a second. But if you want to go ahead and talk about the chart, that would be great. Okay. Um, 
so here's the Starbucks chart. I'm going to pull up the three year being as we broke out of year's resistance. And that would be a three year high also. So we broke out of the two year high, the one year high, and then just here we had a good pullback on Starbucks to the 61.28 area. I'm going to pull up a one year and show you a little bit closer analysis of it. You can see how she pulled back right there. Probably go down to about a 60.57. Then the last couple of months we had a good straight momentum upwards. And people do love their coffee. I'm a coffee connoisseur myself. But uh, so we broke out of that resistance level that we had at 69.44, which was about four days ago, which was on a Tuesday. She pulled back a little bit to the 68.65. Then we broke that resistance. So let me pull up a 20 days chart. We hovered on a 20 day chart above that 50 SMA all the way up. Once we touched that 100 for a good strong buy for maybe getting in it. Then she had the double top, pulled back to the 50 again, hit that 100. And then Friday, she was very strong, bounced up, and broke that resistance at 69.85. So there's really, you know, it's kind of a self guessing game where how much higher it wants to go, but it did break that double top on the, uh, on the three-year chart, two-year chart, and one-year chart. And it all happened within this last two weeks. So like Vegas said, um, they opened their doors up to China a lot more, which they've done. I think they've been in there, but now they've really opened it up. And there's a lot of people in China that drink coffee, coffee and tea. And so this is your breakout here at 69.44. If it pulls back any, I think that's probably what we'll see. It would be at 69.44 for a re-entry on this, if that stock holds right there at 69.44. And that will be Starbucks. And Vegas, did okay. you, were you able to pull um, that up? Hello? Oh, yeah, I thought you were still talking about the chart, Jim. Nope, nope, I'm done. Okay, so um, Starbucks, so I was able to pull up here the option call that I bought. I actually, you know, I only bought one, um, you know, because it, this coming Friday the 15th. But what I did buy was the $69.50 uh, call price. And I paid uh, 77 cents for one contract, which is $77. And it closed off at uh, 86. So I'm only up, you know, $9 on the contract. And uh, if Starbucks can continue tomorrow on this bullish trend, um, then obviously my contract will be worth more. And so I'll let you guys know um, when I sell it and what I ended up making on the on an investment of uh, $77. So we'll see what happens. I'd be happy if it then goes to 100, but um, you know what? If it makes more, I'll be even happier. But hey, you know what? You gotta take the profits on these option calls because you know they can move so fast and you could you know also lose uh, what you've put in pretty quick. I mean, you can very easily lose even 50% to the value of your option uh, trade. If it goes the wrong way, you just have to really cut losses fast. So, um, you know, I'll let you guys know. But so far, uh, Starbucks looks pretty bullish. And hopefully I'll, I'll see a continuation and um, I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, next stock I want to mention is Ford. F is the ticker for the Ford Motor Company. Well, I'm going to let Jim talk about this one because, uh, you know, when I look at the Ford chart, uh, it may not look um, so bullish, but Ford, I believe, uh, has earnings coming up. I'm not sure the exact day. I'll have to dig that up here. Uh, but everyone knows what Ford does. They're apparently planning to do some investments as well. I think they're looking, uh, we read an article not too long of Jim about um, the company looking to expand the other gonna... is I think an article that we had read on Ford yep they're going to open up uh, we're going to invest one billion dollars in assembly plant in Chicago yes in Chicago they, they announced it on us uh, yeah and they're going to create 500, 500 new jobs uh, how many 500 uh, no, I have here 23,000 jobs. They're adding to the 23,000 jobs they've created or retained in the U.S. So 500 jobs, but it says here that they're adding to the 23,000. So I guess they're adding 500 more yep. to the 23,000. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, so that's great news on Ford. So, I mean, if they're investing a billion dollars in their Chicago assembly and stamping plant, um, that's pretty incredible. So, Jim, what are your thoughts, I guess, on the Ford chart? Because, I mean, it's not the prettiest chart. Well, I think it's pretty. I just had a little bitty pull back to support area. And last time, both times we pulled back to this area, it's bounced up pretty good. So I got into an options call on this one here Friday, thinking that we're going to have a good pull up back to that $10 area. Um, not to $10, but back up here to this resistance channel area right in here, which is right around eight fifty to to oh eight eighty two. Let me pull up a 20-day chart on this thing. Oh, that is the 20-day. Okay, let me pull up a monthly chart, just three-month chart, and have a look at it. See, we did pull back here to this low support area at 741, and we bounced up to about 9 bucks. We pulled back to the, my red trend line here at 818 around this vicinity, and we bounced up here at about 883 to a little to that uh, 100 SMA at 896 almost hit that nine dollars and then we had uh, kind of a bad week last week the market was selling off so almost all the stocks pulled back pretty good almost all of them did all but BA that had one heck of a run and it pulled back also so I think it was just in the trend for people and the, the negative sentiment last week that was going throughout the market after the State of the Union speech and it pulled back to my support level here at 818 and bounced back up to a high there and closed at 839. So what I'm thinking, if it pulls back any at all, it's only going to be about 10 cents or so. And then she'll bounce up and start to retrace back up to this to this um, 853 area, maybe back up here to the 882. And if we can break past that 882 area, we can get up here to nine. But yeah. It did have a bad, oh, a bad couple of weeks here back during the end of last year, and every other stock pulled back along with it because it was the worst December we've ever had in Wall Street. And then when January came, she bounced right up to that resistance level. So I think it's just kind of consolidated, had a little pullback, and people are going to get back in it, and we're going to ride this up to this 882 area, maybe try to hit that nine dollars, and that is Ford. And then we got one final play, and I'm going to let Miss Vegas mention it. Yeah, so I do want to mention, last but not least, was Zynga. Uh, we've mentioned this one, too. I mean, they had their earnings this past week, um, and the earnings were uh, not the best. But you know what? They had very good guidance, and uh, Wall Street was happy with that, that we actually see that the stock's broken out of a beautiful channel and has now created a new, another new 52-week high. Um, you know, we've been talking about Zynga even when it was back in the 450s. And this looks like it's ready to go towards five. I mean, it's had a new 52-week high, new 52-week closing. The stock is overbought. Uh, overall, I think the market's very pleased with what's going on with Zynga. And, you know, these executives that work here used to work for Electronic Arts, the ticker called EA. I mean, that's a, a much uh, bigger company. Uh, but the people come from the industry and uh, they work now at Zynga. So uh, they do know what they're doing and uh, looks pretty good. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on that chart? Because I like it really more for a swing trade. I don't know how much it'll actually move on a day trade perspective. Um, but, you know, I think it's looking to do some uh, continuation on the stock, at least to at least maybe $5 next. But it's a very, you know, it's it's moving slow. You know, little you, you can't expect a huge jump. Uh, but I think uh, we can see some nice continuation happening here on the stock. Well, Zynga has had a real good breakout here in the last couple of months. We broke out from this 360 area and run up here to 488. We had that big gap up on Thursday and then a continuation on Friday. So if there's any kind of support area at all on this right now, it'll be right here around 7, 474, which ain't too much from that previous high. And if it pulls back, it'll pull back to this area right here around 458. But Vegas was calling this out when the stock was down here, right around 420 something, and she got her a good 50 cents out of the trade. And so we closed up there pretty high. It closed actually at 488. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 20 day chart, just show you what kind of breakout we've had on this stock from down here to this 420 area. 
which kind of was kept going with higher highs each day. And then this day here, we had a little pullback. And then that next day, it broke past that previous high that we had. So this has been a higher high stock from from a whole month, 20 days at least. And then uh, Wednesday, we had a good pullback on it to support level. And she bounced on up and continued all the way up to the new double top here. And we got a double top right here at 493. She looks to me like she just hit 492 within a penny. So this is one that I've got on watch. I'm not in a trade right now. I'd rather get in on a little pullback if I could. But it de definitely looks a little bullish. It looks a lot bullish, actually. Run from this 420 all the way up to 490. So like she said, it's been a slower little gainer, little by little. But yet, it's it's bullish. And this is Zynga. Z-N-G-A. Keep it on watch. Check. You can draw some of these trend lines that I have on here for support levels. I'm looking at maybe a low support at 467, maybe down here. But you've seen what happened on this day. It pulled back a good from 465 all the way down to 433. That was a 30-cent dip, and that would have been a real good time to get in this stock because you see the big bounce it took about five minutes later or four hours later. We got back up here to that, to that previous high, which is at 483. So... This is Zynga. Keep it on watch. It could be a little volatile, but yet we did break past that into that double top area. And we got to break this 493 to get anywhere come Monday. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that trend line right there. And that's the conclusion of the watch list. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas and see what she's got to say here. Yeah, so that wraps up the watch list for today. And uh, for those of you that are new to our channel... Um, we have now an I Love Stocks Discord chat group. You're welcome to come check it out. Uh, there is a free trial for a few weeks. And then if you decide to join, um, you're welcome to join if, it, if you find it meets your needs and that you enjoy being here. Um, I just want to clarify, too, like, you know, Jim and I were together in a, another Discord channel. And we, you know, we weren't the owners of the channel. And we've been there for about a year now. And uh, we decided to make our own, really, because the um, owner that, of that channel uh, had openly shared with the group, you know, back in December, uh, that unfortunately his family member is not well, and that his focus and priority was definitely to commit to, um, you know, f uh, focusing on the family and taking care of his family member and uh traveling for january and that they were basically going to be leaving the trading uh community till at least probably 2020 which you know what i we think for sure is the right thing to do i mean family is always first i mean the market is always here you know but you know your family um you know when you're dealing with something serious you have to put your energy there so jim and i wanted to still continue having a room and, uh, you know, we did, it was mentioned back then from the blog post that there would be a bit of a transition uh, into basically January. And then basically here we are February and we uh, were inundated actually with messages from people saying, I hope you guys continue having a room. So we just created our own because we didn't own that channel. And uh, we just created one under I Love Stocks. So we hope that you'll uh, enjoy being in this channel We've added some new features in here and we try to keep the room clean and simple and easy to follow. And uh, our mission is always to help uh, traders and also help newbies. And uh, if you have any suggestions or feedback when you're in there, send us a message. We welcome you to come by and hopefully you'll join us. If it's not for you, then it's definitely, you know, no problems. I mean, there's so many things going on out there. So many chat rooms out there. You just really got to pick the one that you like. You know, at the end of the day, you have to pick what fits for you. And that's what matters at the end of the day is what's best for you. So on that note, a uh, new link is in the YouTube video. Uh, please come on by. We welcome you. I love to see women traders come by. I'm so excited that I have so many more women traders coming by, messaging me, thanking me, and uh, feeling supported by Jim. Jim loves women traders. And uh, he is uh, so supportive of uh, women doing well as well. And, you know, options for me has been very new. And I've had some good success 
with some options going in the right direction. And you know what? I'm learning. Like some options I'm fortunately losing money on. And um, when I lose on the trade, I admit it. And there's nothing wrong to admit when you're not doing well in a trade and you close it for a loss. So that is uh, what learning and sharing is all about. So hope everyone has a great weekend. Definitely love stocks. Love the viewers. We love that we're almost at 800. So that's great. And thank you for listening and subscribing. And we see you tomorrow in our chat. If not, we'll see you tomorrow on YouTube. Have a great weekend. Yep. And our blessings go out to the founder of, of that old channel we were in. And we wish them well. And uh, this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, February the 10th, 2019. And have a great day. I love stocks.